People who know me ask me, has Puerto Vallarta become your new go-to Mexican destination? And I would have to admit that the answer to that question is yes. After calling Acapulco my home away from home for so many years, decades, there seems to be a greater sense of community here in Puerto Vallarta. Be it Americans, Canadians, and Mexicans, I seem to fit in better here. And it has become easier to explain why that is the case the more and more that I come here, which has been, this is my fourth time traveling to Puerto Vallarta. It is diverse, it is so varied in the things that you can do, see, the places you can go. And the more I come, the more I am interested in its history, pre-tourism. In this video, I'm going to share a little bit of that history with you, some recent history and some from the nostalgic era of Puerto Vallarta. So stick around, uh, hang out with the Timeless Travel Club, and let's take a tour around Puerto Vallarta. One thing that I forget to do in some of my videos is feature the hotel that I stayed in. So let's get that done, shall we? I spent seven days at the Hotel Posada de Roger. I know, Roger, right? <laughs> For having such a gringo name, this place was truly Mexican authentic. The room was very comfortable. It had AC, although I never used it. It had a brand new, very quiet ceiling fan. It had ample closet space and adequate hot water in a very peachy bathroom. I was on the third floor. There is a nice community kitchen on the fourth floor and a pool on the second floor. And there's also a dedicated door to the restaurant, Freddy's Toucan, which I visited several times. I love the customer service at Freddy's Toucan. So I was very surprised as to how quiet it was at night. Even though it is centrally located, heck, it's only two and a half blocks from the beach. One of the first things that I do upon arriving in Puerto Vallarta is contact my old friend, Sammy. Sammy, I do that because not only is he a good dude, but he is a wealth of knowledge. He knows so much about the history of Puerto Vallarta. In fact, we'll be walking down the town and he stuff just starts spilling out. This building this, this building that, and in the year, and I'm busting out my camera, but the problem is, is Cam Sammy is a little camera shy, so I've got to do it somehow sneakily to maybe turn the camera on without pointing it at his face to at least capture the audio because otherwise I would forget almost everything that he says because that's I'm a forgetful kind of guy that way. But yeah, he also took me to a, a couple of other surprise sites with some information, some history on uh, Puerto Vallarta that I wasn't expecting. So I think you're going to enjoy that. Uh, we're going to take a look at the uh, river, uh, the Rio Cuale, which if you are familiar with uh, Puerto Vallarta, you know that there was a, a pretty severe hurricane that blew through, I think, in September 
Um, it wasn't so much the hurricane that did did the, da did the damage, but the River Quale uh, was severely flooded and a bridge was taken out. There were a couple of lives lost. And um, so now they are rebuilding. And I'm going to show you the progress of uh, the Rio Quale in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> And along the way, because Sammy, his house is right over the river. He had a uh, he had a pretty impressive view. So let's check that out. So you were right on top of the whole view, weren't you? You could see. see? I could see from there. I told you that I, I try. I, I will see. This is the the widest. Uh, uh, part of the river, yeah. and and I would hear the noise of the rocks hitting each other. Yeah. The the big rush started about uh, eight or nine at night, yeah. and it was all night long. Is that the worst hurricane you've experienced? Yeah. And I was about to sleep around nine thirty, ten. When all of a sudden I started hearing a lot of, uh, and I just came out and I tried to make a video, but it was dark and my camera was no good. Yeah. And I just saw the water reflection, huh? and the lights reflecting on the water, and I heard the noise. Vroom, vroom, vroom. We are on uh, Calle Cinco de Febrero. In Insurgentes. And Insurgentes. Which is that? And here is the new bridge that is being built. Uh, due, to, due to be finished uh, in a month? Yeah. There was uh, uh, an old uh, uh, clothes store, department store, owned by one of the richest men local of Puerto Vallarta, who owns the the, the Woolport building. Okay? Oh, okay. And, and the, the place was called La Surtidora del Puente. Okay? They closed it a few years ago and they opened a new place called LANS, L-A-N-S, which is La Surtidora del Puente. And here they remodel it and they make it into a little uh, hostel. Hostel? Hostel? Uh -huh, a hostel. A hostel. And on this uh, hurricane, right here there was a small cafeteria with a river view, as you can see, balcony. Okay. And there was a couple that came and unfortunately uh, they stayed here. And they left their 10 or 12 year old son sleeping and they came down to the bar. Uh -huh. When the big rush came, there was so much uh, pressure on the water that the building collapsed. That's why it's not missing. This is new. Yeah. Well, not new, they just remodeled. But the hostel was right at this location. Uh huh. It's right in this corner, that's why. Yeah, that's sad. And now this is going to be the new bridge. The old bridge will come all the way from there, but uh, at, uh, at, uh, at this level. Oh, okay. There was no way out uh, across. And now I see they're going to leave a... a higher than it. A higher. Where it needs to be. And besides, the, the river wasn't that, uh, that wide, it was narrow. Yeah. And uh, it had about uh, two or three uh, rock columns. Yeah. Long. There was a, a big uh, gas oh. tank. It's gone. <laughs> I used to work in this Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> Doing what? Uh, selling uh, uh, jewelry and handcraft. Yeah. Oh. Is it this street here that used to be uh, downtown? See, si, this is the street that goes, it's called Insurgentes. Insurgentes. It goes from uh, this Malloy, uh -huh. from the highway, towards the uh, downtown area. Okay. There's the bridge that was damaged by the big rock. But this building here, what used to be here was the theater. Cine Bahia. Cine, Cine Bahia. This used to be a very famous, a 
a very famous supermarket called Gutierrez Rizzo, which was the corner? last name to the owner. Okay. But once again, when the big companies start coming, uh, Mexican companies, be, yeah. be, before uh, Walmart and Sam's and all that, they closed. But the building, yeah, they just cleared off about uh, six months ago. They're waiting maybe for somebody to sell it to. Yeah, or sell the then somebody will buy it. This is what used to be the Elizabeth Taylor cinema. This is it, huh? It's a small cinema. It really doesn't look like much now. Interesting. Uh oh, it's turned into an adult movie theater. I don't think Richard Burton would approve. This place, many years ago, used to be called Posada. It was considered like a kind of a little, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, little huts. Oh, yeah. And uh, a lot of palm trees and mango trees. But they sold the place. And The city and people of Puerto Vallarta are hard at work to not only move beyond Hurricane Nora, but it appears they're committed to making it even better. Gringo Gulch, for example, where locals and expats are working together to make Nora and COVID just another page in history to turn. The Cultural Center of Arts is once again open for business in Gringo Gulch. Native plants are being replanted by volunteers. Families are out, tourism is back, and after two years of lockdown, Canadian tourists are in full bloom. So in my last video, I mentioned that the reason that I was going to Puerto Vallarta was to get dental implants. Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> oh, I got a great teeth cleaning, but um, the uh, I was expecting maybe one implant at a time. And I, the dentist that I went to, Senora, see, si, Doctora Melissa Menendez, Menendez, no, Menen, Men, what is her name? Melissa Meneses. I think that's I think that's how you say it. She was great, by the way. And when it is time for me to get my dental implants, I am going to her. The name of her business is uh, Dental Aesthetic. Uh, my cleaning was sixty dollars, and the each implant would cost fifteen hundred dollars. But she mentioned in my case, I had to get two at a time, and I wasn't really prepared to pay three thousand dollars at that moment so uh, it's going to take another visit but i'm glad i went because i got to scout the place out the office is around the uh sheraton hotel area i don't know what colonia that's called but uh the office is brand new she has the, the most up-to-date equipment 
Her entire staff spoke English. They sent a car to pick me up at my hotel, and when my dental work was done, they took me back. So uh, it was a great experience. I highly recommend um, Dr. Melissa. I think part of the reason I, I decided not to get the implant at that time is because I wasn't prepared to do away with my partial. I have no pain, I have no problem whatsoever with my teeth at this time, knock on some wood. So um, I decided not to do it. But I know a lot of you were, um, were counting on this trip because I was gonna report back. So I tell you what, a few videos ago, uh, my sister went to a dentist in, in TJ, in Tijuana, and she, she absolutely loved her doctor. So he was highly recommended as well. His name is uh, Dr. Sergio Herrera. Uh, if you are in Southern California or if you're anywhere that you wanted to try a, doc, a dentist in TJ, there's an opportunity uh, as well. So two options for you. Now, every time that I go to Puerto Vallarta, there are a number of people, both um, Mexicans and otherwise, who always rave about this taco place. And you know, if you watch my videos, you know I'm not much of a foodie kind of guy. I, I travel solo, it's not somebody to hold my camera when I say, mmm, that was good stuff, good tacos. But there is a taco place, I had to try it. It's right by the airport. Check this place out. I finally did. So if you're at the Puerto Vallarta airport, there is a, a pedestrian bridge that goes over the highway. If you cross that bridge, at the very bottom, at the other side, there is this place, this taco place. I couldn't believe how good these tacos were. When I finally got there, the place was packed with both locals and tourists. I ordered two fish tacos to go. It was a mixed fish because I had like three hours to spare at the airport. Once I got to the airport and I busted these bad dogs out and started munching on these tacos, people were walking by saying, Orale, where did you get these tacos? So uh, yeah, they not only taste good, smell good, but apparently they look pretty darn good as well. So um, another highly recommend a great taco place in Puerto Vallarta. So I follow this trip in Puerto Vallarta with a trip to Sayulita for the purpose of learning how to surf. So stay tuned for that video uh, on the next go round. Until then, be safe, be well, and when traveling, make sure it is timeless. All right, ciao.